911 operators of Reddit. What is the creepiest call you've handled? Story 1. Lots, but one of my favorite creepy calls is the shadow people guy. A call comes in in the dead of night, and a middle-aged fellow is reporting a burglary in process in a lower-income part of town. He's locked himself in the bathroom and communicating in short, terrified whispers. He describes the whole event in great detail. Who, what, where, how. He describes the sound of feet shuffling around the house and getting nearer to him. He hears a couple of male voices talking about which items to take and if anyone is here. He stops answering me periodically as he hears footsteps coming closer. He describes seeing the shadows of two pairs of feet walking by the door into his bedroom. He's pleading with me to hurry up and send police because he doesn't have any weapons and he's disabled and what if they hurt him. He's quietly sobbing as he tells me that they're right outside the bathroom door now, just standing there and they know he's in there. I heard a small knock in the background. Police arrive at that moment and clear the scene. I tell him to come to the door, it's safe now. He does so and disconnects the line. Heard later from the officers that when the guy opened the door, the entire house was covered wall to wall in aluminum foil, and webs of fishing line and other booby traps so thickly sped throughout the house that it was impossible for any creature, human or otherwise, to have entered or sneaked around the residence, much less the homeowner himself. He had been sitting by the front door the entire time. Story 2 911 call talker and dispatcher here. I work in a CCC combined communication center, and we have four agencies working together. We have about five call talkers during the night. Anyways, one night around 2 to 3 a.m., quiet as can be, one call taker gets a call with only a woman screaming and nothing else, and then the woman disconnects the line. About five seconds after that, all of our lines light up and ring at once. That's about 16 lines, when we only have five call talkers. Every line we answered was only people screaming, with no one understanding what was going on. No person would give us anything. No address, no reason why they're calling, nothing. So for about two to three minutes, we have no idea idea what's going on. Good for us, we can ping cell phones and get a location at least. Well, by this time, we got officers rolling. A lot of officers rolling to this location, and right when they got close, we figure out what's going on. There was a party, and there was a shooting. It's not really creepy when you know that, but for the first couple of minutes, when we don't know why people are calling, only screaming... Holy cow, it was insane. Story 3. Not an operator, but applied and took exams to try to become one years ago. The instructor in the group told us that the calls you take will stay with you forever and can potentially haunt you. His example was a call from a mother whose newborn was asleep next to her on her bed. In the middle of her nap, she had rolled over and accidentally smothered the baby. She was hysterical because the baby was already dead. Years later, when he had his first child, he was so horrified to do the same thing that he refused to let the baby near his bed, or let his kids sleep in his bed with him and his wife. He said he had difficulty bonding with his kids because of this. Years of counseling helped, but he said it came back a little with every baby. Story 4. I had a woman call in because she was hiding in her second floor bathroom from a werewolf that was right outside her door. Obviously dispatched a unit for a mental health check, but had to stay on the phone with her while she screamed and cried in absolute terror until the guys got there. It took over 20 minutes for them to arrive, and then she wouldn't leave the bathroom to open the door for them, so they had to climb on the roof and break into a second story window to get her. The whole time I was on the phone with her, and she was absolutely terrified. At one point, about 10 minutes into the call, I gained her trust and calmed her down. I had her put her phone down and open the bathroom door, promising that there was no werewolf there. I listened as she placed the phone down, shuffled over to the door, and then slowly opened it. The scream she let out is one of the most horrible I have ever heard. She came back to the phone screaming at me that I had lied to her and that it was still right outside the door. Eventually, the guys got in and they were able to take her to the hospital, but it was definitely the creepiest call I ever received. Story 5 Paramedic here. We had a call come in for a car wreck at about 3 a.m. Dispatch was unsure of where the car was because the call was cut off, but the cell phone pinged in the area they dispatched us to. We couldn't find the car or the lady. Dispatch comes back and says they assumed it was a car wreck because the lady said, I can't get out of the car and I can't breathe. We never found the car or the lady. In the back of my mind, I wondered if she was kidnapped in a trunk of a car somewhere and the kidnapper caught her on the phone and shut it off. Story 6. My dad is a paramedic. Last year, he got a life alert signal coming from a house in the deep ghetto. His unit went to check it out. They get there and the house was totally boarded up, so they call the fire department. They get there and it's covered in upside-down crosses, Satanist symbols, and sh 
out in every single room. The electricity was out, but there was a few candles scattered around and they had flashlights. Desecrated statue of Mary in the bedroom. Various weapons ranging from a broadsword to a set of torture implements. They thought that was pretty bad until they checked out the basement. Bloody altar with sacrificed puppy and knives and what looked like a summoning circle scrawled on the floor in blood. They did find a live puppy in a cage in a corner, so I guess some good came out of it. Never actually found the life alert bracelet, though. He took some pictures. I'll see if he still has them. Story 7. Not a 911 operator. However, I hope this counts. My grandmother was in the hospital and had a heart attack in bed. She had picked up the phone and called the last person she called, which was me two days ago, to grab some food for her. I see my grandma on my phone calling me, and I pick it up. All I hear is moaning and groaning, and I ask if she was okay. After that, I heard a crash and silence for a couple of seconds. I heard screaming afterwards, and finally, the call had ended. She passed away that day. It still shocks me, and I still miss her. Love you, Grandma. Story 8. I was a 911 dispatcher about 10 years ago, and a woman would call in somewhat frequently and claim someone was in her attic. She was very convincing and seemed genuinely freaked out. The first time I received her call, she described the person as running up and down the attic, then stopping and knocking immediately above her head. We sent an officer out several times and they found nothing, guessing she had mental issues, but she honestly did not sound crazy. That's such a creepy image, like they can see through the ceiling and know exactly where she is. Mental illness is scary. Story 9. Not sure if creepy or just creepy coincidence. I'm not a dispatcher, but my grandmother was 435 years. My mother, little sister, and I lived with her when I was growing up. I was babysitting my little sis one night, and she was running down the hall way too fast. She tripped and went head first right into a sharp corner of a marble coffee table, split her head wide open. I called 911. My grandma answers out of like 20 plus dispatchers at that center and she picks up story 10 during a winter break at a university the international kids remain on campus took a call from a young male he was under attack in his dorm apartment university police i dispatch the two officers they arrive on scene open the door and find the young male on the phone huddled in the corner the area is completely tossed clear sign of struggle the male looks at the officers and said he is in there and he has a knife looking at the bathroom door one of the officers kicks down the door no one in there they turn to see the male with the phone was now wielding a knife he lunged at the officers and after slashing one in the arm was taken down it was chalked up to he forgot to take his medicine the school allowed him to continue his education and living on campus. Story 11. Not a 911 operator, but used to like to listen to local police scanners late at night. Dispatcher sends officers to a 911 call, informs them the lady who called said there was something in her closet. It spoke to her, but she's not sure it's human. Girlfriend who I thought was asleep sits up and says, what the f*** did they say? Not sure if it's human. I hope she's crazy or that's a prank call. We were both creeped out for a while after hearing that. Story 12. I'm not a 911 operator, but I remember when I was listening to a radio show a while back, they were doing prank calls, so they prank called 911, and the guy pretended that he had narcolepsy and he worked at a funeral home. He actually convinced the operator that he fell asleep in one of the caskets and they buried him alive. And he needed help escaping, but he didn't know where he was buried at. Her reaction was hilarious. Story 13. Older lady, I want to say maybe early 70s, calls in with a sort of polite urgency in her voice. Tells me she thinks she's having a stroke. Tells me she has her grandchild at the house with her, asks me to call her daughter to come get the child. By the time she's done giving me her phone number, there's just a very slight slur in her speech. By the time EMS got there, probably no more than five minutes or so, I couldn't understand a thing she was saying. Fascinating, disturbing, and profoundly sad hearing someone stroke out on the phone as they're talking to you. Story 14. Well, my buddy is a fireman and dispatch had just alerted them of a man having chest pains. They get to the guy's house, and as soon as they open the door, the dude's dog runs outside. The dude shouts, you let my dog out, go get my dog, please. So my buddy immediately starts chasing the dog. He catches the dog, comes back to the house, and when he walks in the door, he sees that the man having chest pains had actually shot a hole in his chest while cleaning his gun. Old dude shoots himself in the chest, tells 911 it's chest pains, and when help arrives, he makes them go chase down his dog before tending to his own life-threatening wound. Biggest what the fuck of my buddy's career. Story 15. I worked for a dispatch company very similar to Life Alert. An older lady in her 90s thought someone was intruding on her property and called the cops. She had severe dementia though and forgot she had called the cops, so when they rang her door, she thought they were the intruders. 
so she hit her wrist button to get into contact with us, then she got out her gun. I then called the police, while also talking to her, and literally on the recording you could hear her taking shots at the police officers on scene, while they freaked out while I, and I got my supervisor ASAP, tried to talk her down. The police and I eventually got her to calm down and stop firing, but apparently she had missed a police officer by just six inches. Family had to get involved, and she ended up moving to a nursing home shortly after. Dementia sucks. Story 16. Not a 911 operator, but one who called on emergency button on our radio. I'm a paramedic, and one day we were called to a scene for an overdose. Not overly different or anything, but hey, everything seemed normal for an overdose. We got on scene with one officer, and after finding the patient, we tried to wake him up. Dude didn't respond at first, but after a minute, he awoke with the fury of a hundred bulls. What seemed to be less than three seconds, the patient sprung up, punched the officer, Sparta kicked my partner out of the door, and cornered me in the room with a big ass knife. I have never hit the panic button on our radios faster in my life. Best part? Dispatch came on the radio. Medic X, are you in need of assistance? King, yes, dispatch, we are. In the end, no one got hurt, but man, I couldn't sleep for a few days. Story 17. I've been a 911 operator for 10 years. I'll never forget the time I took a noise complaint. The caller was complaining that the children in the street were being too loud. Happens all the time. Annoying, but no big deal. The odd thing was she was calling me through a relay service for the deaf. After one, we were working a barricaded subject called with SWAT. Called out the helicopter and had them circling the area for what seemed like hours. This usually leads to calls of citizens concerned that we are looking for someone and want to know if it's safe. So, after constantly answering the phones and telling people it's fine, I get a phone call from a girl. She asked about the helicopter, I gave her the basic rundown, she then goes, oh okay, so the helicopter isn't in danger. She thought it was crashing and had been for hours. Of course we get bad calls, I try not to focus on those. Story 18. Not a 911 operator, but am a cop and likewise am friends with a lot of dispatchers slash 911 operators. It's not really a call, but our department had lost one officer in our 113 years of service to a roadside shooting on a traffic stop. I wasn't on that shift, but they all tell me that the call is the one that still haunts them to this day, because the officer hit the emergency button on his radio that automatically sends his location and transmit everything for the next 10 seconds. He didn't even get to yell out shots fired or anything. It was just emergency button and then, I'm hit, I'm dying, I'm really dying, I love all of you. And hard breathing. He didn't transmit anything else after that, and by the time my friends got to him, he was already gone. Shot for no reason. And he was out with had no warrants, no serious criminal history, nothing. The call was, by all means, a routine traffic stop until the guy suddenly yanked out a gun on the officer's approach back to the car. Story 19. Not a 911 operator, but my sister was a paramedic. A little girl, four years old at most, called crying and said that Jackie is hurt and his arm is coming off. Her dad was out and she and Jackie were home alone. Ambulance came expecting someone with serious blood loss, possibly an injured child. Turns out Jackie needed stitches. He was a teddy bear. Her recently widowed father had gone to his restaurant where he, for the last few weeks there had been a serious of false alarms, knowing it would take him 15 to 20 minutes to deal with it, he had told his daughter that Jackie would be there for her and that it wouldn't take long. Turns out this time, there was a real fire. The paramedic stitched the bandaged Jackie the teddy bear and waited for her father. Luckily, no one was hurt. Story 20. Child caller, about 6 years old. Called 911 on mom's cell phone, but disconnected before saying anything, and the phone wasn't connected long enough to get an address. Called back, and the kiddo says his mom won't wake up. I even hit her with my plastic sword. He doesn't know his address and can't really read. He knows some letters, so I have him dumping mom's purse looking for her license. Asking where she keeps the mail, where are medicines, anything I can think of to get an address. After about 45 minutes, we manage to get mom's name and track down the complex they live in, in a neighboring city. Calling the neighboring city back later, I found out mom took a sleeping pill and laid down for a nap. She was fine. Story 21. Was a police officer for a short time. One night, there was a high-speed pursuit in another part of the county. They eventually got the car to stop. Later on that night, we all stood around the SGTS desk to listen to the 911 call the guy made as he was being pursued. He was sobbing uncontrollably pretty much the entire call, which is terrifying considering he was easily doing over 90 miles an hour. Story 22. I have a funny one to lighten up the thread. From my grandfather's time being a 911 operator. 
he received a call from a man on the side of the road. The man is asking all these questions about roadkill and what to do if you hit an animal. My grandfather politely tells him to call animal control or wildlife, fish and game, depending on the animal and if it's dead or not. But the man seems more frazzled and isn't truly asking what he wants to know. My grandfather is a no-nonsense guy and goes, spit it out already, man. Well, I'm asking if I hit a deer with my car, can I take it home to eat it? My grandfather had a long silence. Technically, no, the man couldn't. It has to be reported to the wildlife office. But he also understood times were tough. Grandfather. Have you already loaded the animal into your vehicle? Man. Uh, yeah. Grandfather. And you're sure it's dead? Long silence as the man shuffles to check. My grandfather said he heard some distant screaming and swearing, a loud commotion, and then silence. The man suddenly comes back. Man. Could you send an ambulance to my location? The buck dug an antler into my shoulder and got away. Story 23. I have a happier story for you guys. Obligatory notice that I was not a 999 operator, but a family member of mine was, hence how I know the story. An old woman called, extremely confused, because she says there is an elephant in her back garden. She is questioned, but is insistent that there is a fully grown elephant in her garden. She's frightened, probably because she thinks there's a f***ing elephant in her back garden. Now the immediately assumption is that the woman may have dementia, because obviously there's not an elephant in her garden in England, so an officer is sent to do a welfare check on the poor woman. Then the officer calls for backup. Because he got to her house and she let him inside and took him through to the kitchen to look out into the garden. Yep, there's an elephant. And it's eating her plants. Turns out there was a circus relatively nearby and the elephant had escaped overnight. 